evening. Thank you so much for joining us for another Closer Experience. Um, we are in the month of April, and this is our third week where we're talking about the parables. There are so many parables and great parables, um, and they are so deep and um, with, you know, nuggets is yes. what I want to say. And so we're going to focus in this evening on the parable of the barren fig tree. I am Elder Jeanette Pollock, and tonight I have with me um, our illustrious deacon, Barbara Jones, illustrious. Good evening. <laughs> and we're excited to be here tonight. Um, as we've studied this parable again, um, it's interesting how, how really when you dig into it, there's so much more to it. So let's go ahead and kick off. And if Barbara, if you'll read the parable, we'll start asking questions after sure. that. Sure. Parable comes tonight from Luke 13, <clears throat> chapter... Um, verses six through nine. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard and he went to look for fruit on it, but it did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, mm -hmm. I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should I use up the soil. Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit never next year, fine. If not, cut it down. Okay. Well, let me just, just off of what you read, what is your thoughts of What's your interpretation? How do you perceive that that message, that parable? Uh, somebody's trying to save. They're trying to save this tree, mm -hmm. which would be us. And we had somebody advocating. Mm -hmm. No, let's wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work with them. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to work with them, give them what they need, you know, nourish it, fertilize it. Mm -hmm. And if there's no fruit, I have no problem with you getting rid of the tree. Mm -hmm. But give me an opportunity to work a little bit longer with them. You know, just salvation. Somebody mm -hmm. looking out for me. Okay. Because I'm not looking out for myself at this point. So that that that's what I get. Somebody advocating on my part that mm, let's give just a little bit more. Some patience, some, mm -hmm. some kindness. Is, is being grace is given to us. Okay. This would this would be more of a to me. I see grace because like just a little bit longer. Let, let me stay here a little bit longer with this tree and work on it. Well, let me ask but a question. Feed something in it. But then why hasn't it bearing fruit yet? Three years. In my my mind, they were given directions to start with but they never follow the directions. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just put a tree in the ground and leave it. Mm -hmm. But if you put fertilizer to start with and you thought, well, it's going to catch this root, you know, mm -hmm. grow more, um, it's going to um, get in there and work it and do it and we did tilling it. But if, the, if those roots don't catch, you have no fruit. You can have a pretty mm -hmm. tree, but nothing's going to, it's got to have the right, the when you when you're doing flowers and trees and stuff like they gotta have the right environment. Okay, so we want you to um, engage with us. So make sure you're dropping your comments, your thoughts in the chat. Um, if it resonates with you, give us a thumbs up. Um, but but this is interactive, so share your share your thoughts with us as we go along. Um, so I want to go back and give it a little context because I want to first see how we interpret it just in in our natural eye. I think it's interesting that, that Jesus generally used parables um, as a way to, to tell stories. I think you're dealing with a lot of different dialects and languages at that time, but in, in he's telling a spiritual um, symbolism in the physical so that listeners could understand. So I think, um, I think it just isn't, is a way for him to um, explain to such a diverse group of people in a way that all of them could understand it. And so when he's talking about the fig tree 
And I love how you said that he, um, it needs nourishment. It needs water, it needs tilling. And I would say that when Jesus came, well, even before Jesus, John came, John the Baptist was on the scene telling of get saved, be baptized, uh, turn your life over to Christ because Christ Jesus was coming. Yeah. And so he was preparing them. He was part of this, the, the timeline, so to speak. If we think about it, if Jesus came and he was only here for a brief period where he was actually tilling the soil, he was watering, he was pouring in, he was talking about, he was talking about repentance, changing your life, bearing the fruits of the spirit of how we treated one another, loving our brother as we love ourselves. Yes. So he was talking of these things, but people spent more time in, in not being obedient for one, but also not, not producing the fruit, not, not doing those things that you would expect of someone who believes in Christ. Yes. Yes. So I think just again, to set context is, it's not like he came up on the scene and just said, tree, you're not bearing fruit. Right. Um, but let's also look at kind of, why would you say that the tree, because it, it makes mention of the tree being planted in a vineyard. What was significant or important about the vineyard? The vineyard, the <clears throat> soil in the, soil the, vineyard, the vineyard is extremely rich. Mm -hmm. So putting that fig tree in there, naturally it should flourish. Mm -hmm. It should bear more fruit than you can eat. But if the tree, if those roots are not deep, they're not going to do anything but have a pretty little bush on top of the ground. But those roots got to go deep. You got to have it in your heart mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to, in order, <clears throat> excuse me, in order for there to be some fruit for you to have. So it requires us to be rooted deeply. And I keep coming back to kind of, of looking from another perspective is how they were behaving at that time. And again, like you said, when we think of the vineyard, the vineyard tended to be a place where there was more attention given to us. My other side says, God was given a great deal of attention to Israel. Yes. to the people. And again, John came, then Jesus came and was giving guidance to be obedient. And the big thing out of this story, Barb, that I found is he's talking about repentance. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a key, key and to that, it. And that's not evident if you're just kind of on the surface reading it, but he is saying, repent, get closer to him, be saved to start and start bearing the fruit, because if you're not bearing the fruit, then, then you're taking up space. And actually you can be, um, I think we'd refer to it. I would refer to it today as a cancer. Um, the mumbling within the church, the, the back be a hindrance to somebody else. Absolutely. You, you, absolutely. I'm disgruntled. So I'm gonna make everybody else. Absolutely. I'm not, <clears throat> my heart is not where it needs to be with Christ. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, just say anything and do anything. And that one person that might be on the edge, absolutely, you can push them left or right. Absolutely. And, and I think we find that with churches today, when you stop and think about it, we're all of one body. So what one church is doing should not be um, anything that I need to put down. You know, we, we hear we hear of how some preacher, uh, preachers are trying to, or ministers or pastors are trying to reach um, the young generation now. And so they go about in different ways. And so there's a lot of, you see it on social media where people are chiming in as to how does he call himself a preacher? And so we start getting a lot of division. We start spending a lot of time in the wrong places and spaces because we can't tell what God has said mm -hmm. for anyone to do, but us. And I think that's a, one of the things that also comes out of this for me is, am I producing fruit. So Barb, I would ask the question, if you met me three years ago, which you've known me for three years, right? Mm, four, almost okay, four. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I counted it up the other day. <laughs> oh, wow. 
I hope that I am bearing a different kind of fruit or bearing fruit from when you first met me. Very much so. And I say that <clears throat> because when you're speaking mm -hmm. and you've gone from speaking to teaching, I hear the confidence. Mm. And so, excuse me, it's there. And um, I hope the same thing for me because I know I'm not the same person. Yeah. I was when I went in, when I came there, because I was like, mm, these people weird. <laughs> but I was invited by a friend. Right. And the more I got there, the more I got, mm -hmm. the more I wanted to be there, the more I wanted to go and sit and open up my Bible, the more I wanted to, I want God to talk to me too, where right. I can understand. Because right. what he tells you, we, he might tell us the same thing. He said the sun's shining, but he might tell me a different way how the sun's shining so I can understand. And we're Absolutely. not constricted to just this, read this. Mm -hmm. There, we're, we're, the, the structure has allowed us to go to different places and, and, and ask God, where do you want me to mm -hmm. go? We're, we're taught that. And I see that you, you always, mention or say God mm -hmm. you know speak, seek him first and mm -hmm. that's the big thing that we need to teach everybody is to seek God first before you do anything and I think this goes back to even even as he's talking about the, the parable of the barren fruit is and we know it more more commonly is seek me seek the kingdom of God and everything else will provide it unto you and we're not doing that we're doing things um, you had mentioned before we started is talking about Producing versus bearing. Do you remember what that, that oh, line was? Oh yeah, about? yeah. It um, there there is a difference in um, producing and bearing fruit. Um, it's fruit producing is attempting to live the Christian in our own power. Fruit bearing is the result of faith. Fruit producing is striving and struggling. Mm. Fruit bearing abides in Christ, bringing rest and peace. And fruit, fruit producing is rules and self-effort, never knowing if one has done enough. That's that's deep right there. And I think where we get it, where, where we miss the mark, miss the boat, is we're trying to produce. Right. We're trying to let our work. As a nation, we're looking, trying to. And he's looking for our faith. Right. And so we're always come up short because we're trying to do it of our own, of our own will, our own strength. And that's not by our own rules and regulations, right. what we think we ought to do. We think we ought to do X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z by the time we're 20. Mm -hmm. That might not be it. You might yeah. not be able to do but X till you're 20. It might be 65 before you get mm -hmm. to where you are. And He's trying to get us, but you just have faith in me. And I'm mm -hmm. a, if you listen to me, right. and if you do what I ask you to do, and just mm -hmm. let me work your life. And I think that that is letting him, and that's part of the connection that we have to have. I go back to last month, we talked about um, the, the, the vine and the branches, and that when we seek him, truly seek him, he says, first, we will find him. And in finding him, he will continue to prune us and groom us so that we are strong and that we become fruit producing. I want to talk about for a minute, what does that fruit producing look like? Um, and it sounds pretty basic, but we still don't get it because I think we get too distracted by the, the glitter and the glamour of the world and we, we lose sight of it. And it's basic. Um, the fruit of the spirit that would demonstrate our love of God, our love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And self-control is one of the one things that we, I like self-control. You like or you I like? I like L-A-C-K. <laughs> and, and I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. I do, and I have to reel myself in because sometimes at the end of the day I realize how much time I wasted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just because I wanted to 
do what I wanted to do. And I said, man, that's not what I had planned for you this morning. Do you not remember our agenda? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but so I'm having, I'm having to, and I'm having a lot of more time to myself now so I can see myself. And I'm like, oh, wow. she all right. But she got some work to do still. And that's, and that's great. So I would ask our listeners <clears throat> this evening to, if you feel bold, you can drop what area of the, those, those items, the spirits of the fruits of the spirit, are you lacking or areas that you know you need to work on? Um, I think that self-control, I think is just big for all of us because we see something, we want it. We want to do something. We want to spend our money. However, we want to spend it. We don't want to tithe. And so there are sacrifices. And I would say that's an area that, that, God dealt with me early on, even tithing. When I stop and think about vacations I could go on, but no, I can't count that tithing because that's being obedient, being obedient versus sacrifice. And so I've learned that area of self-discipline, but there are things that still, that I still have to work with, within. Um, Sometimes my patience. Yeah. Um, sometimes I can be curt, as I've been told. I can be blunt. Ooh, yeah. And so I have to work on that because people need to feel feel love. So it's kind of like if I encounter you, there should be something that resonates with me as some peace. Oh, yeah, I should see lovely. you walking in the door and tense up. Right, right. I said, oh, that's, that's tell the Jeanette. Hi, right, oh, girl. Right. But so we, there's some outwardly, those. there's some outwardly ways in which we can do it. And then there's, again, some very personal ways that we've got to look at ourselves and determine, are we operating in the fruits? Are we bearing fruit? And I think that that is one of the things, and we'll circle back at the, at the conclusion as to really doing the to look at the man in the mirror and and figuring out, am I bearing fruit? And we need to realize we can't do that. We can't, we can't answer that question ourselves. We got to we gotta take that to God. Because mm-hmm. what I think I might be doing good, he might not know. That's not. You're not bearing fruit. You just got to, you just standing up in a tree in suit. <laughs> Say, what, what, what have you done that touched someone else? That made somebody else want to Pick up this Bible and read it. Or come mm-hmm. read, listen to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Or trying to be like you. We have we don't we don't have the role models that we have. Our young folks have. They're calling us out. Mm. They're calling us out because they realize we are. Huh? How I see you over here doing X, Y, and Z, but you telling me I need to do A, B, and C. Mm-hmm. So they're they're convicting us, mm-hmm. and that's that's one thing. God will convict you. No, absolutely. And if you don't feel that conviction, your heart's not where it need to be. If absolutely. you're doing something wrong and it don't bother you, you need to get on the knees twice. <laughs> on the knees twice. On the knees twice, because <laughs> certain things should 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 have, should bother you. Should should make you say, mm, "That's not Christ like." And that's what we're, that's all we're trying to, we're all striving to be Christ-like. And he wants us to be there. He, want, he wants us to be like him. Absolutely. He wants us to go the extra mile just because it's the extra mile, not because somebody's making you go, because it makes you feel good. I wanted to read a section that talks about um, God is looking for repentance. He's looking for a true heart. Um, It says the good news of this story is God, the master gardener, is merciful and willing to forgive. He is patient, but his patience will run out. Um, Neither you nor I will be on, want to be on the receiving end of that axe, (laughs) the axe ready to chop us down. Yeah, because he was going us. Yeah, but, but the other thing is, while he's merciful, he's not going to be forever. So as we're dibble dabbling and not being obedient, not repenting of our sins of omission and commission, we put ourselves at risk of not being with him in eternity. And so it's kind of just 
check yourself out. Get your house in order. Where are you at? It's just like a parent with children. They prepare their kids mm -hmm. to be adults. Yeah. And he's trying to prepare us, but we don't want to be adults. We want to be juveniles. And he he's giving us all of this. But after a while, when you keep telling this child, don't stick your finger in the plug, mm -hmm. don't stick your finger in the plug, and they go, so what do you do? You smack that. You, you cut the street out, stop him because he knows it's not mm -hmm. good for us and he mm -hmm. knows what exactly what's good for us and what's not. And he's going to get upset because I'm trying to keep you from busting your own head open. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't get that. We don't understand. We don't, we don't put those two things together that that is why he could, you know, somebody, oh, why God get angry? You know, somebody said, so we were talking about something once and say, well, God get angry? Yeah, because you're not doing what he asked you to do. He just like any other parent. That's your father. Your dad wants you to do what he has instructed you to do during the day. And when you don't do it, and he's continually told you, because he knows he's telling you things that's good for you. He's not just right. telling you something because I'm the daddy. Right. And if you listen, you will eventually bear fruit. Right. They keep coming back to bear, the bear right. bearing the fruit, not producing, but bearing the fruit. You'll have it all on your insides. Right. Your, your heart will be right with him and, and you won't have any problems. He wants that heart to just mm -hmm. pop open with him. Mm -hmm. and, and it's that, not hard. And that goes back to, again, the, the, the vine and the branch and just being connected you have to be intentional. You have to, you can't, weeks can't, months can't go by that you're, you're coming, falling to your knees and praying. Mm -hmm. So I, I always see that as ongoing communication on a daily basis. Lord, thank you for this day that you've given me. Now, what do you want me to do? How will you use the vessel you've like, created me to do? And you cannot water a tree once a week. Yeah. And, and yeah. there's some fruit. Some trees you can water once a month and they're fine. But there's others you got to till and do everything mm -hmm. every day in order for those roots to catch. Mm -hmm. to, that's, and that's what we're, where we, we don't do. We don't get our mm -hmm. roots where we, we don't, we're not nurturing our roots so they can mm -hmm. catch. Because you got the deeper those roots are, the, long, the longer that tree's going to stay. In. And, and it's, it's interesting because as we <clears throat> talk about parables, again, the studying of the word is so pivotal because in it, he will meet you right where you're at. There's a situation you may be addressing that he will take you to a certain description of how to handle it. Yes. Communicating with him daily is an opportunity to open up that communication. And if you're not doing it on a regular basis, he can't move mountains. He can't do things for you because you're not deeply rooted. And here's the reality. Life is lifing, as we say. Life is happening and storms will come. The word tells us that. But if you're not anchored, if your roots are not anchored, then you have a chance of just blowing in the wind. And we saw that with the storm last week. <laughs> All those giant trees mm -hmm. just fell over because their roots were bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great example. Their roots were bad. So you can be making $400,000 a month driving all these cars. Mm -hmm. Kids going to college, doing whatever they're doing. But if that family's not rooted, mm -hmm. if your roots are not in God, the least little hiccup, you can trip over for the whole thing just go crumble because you're not where you should be. Not rooted. Here's another um, I wanted to talk about. Jesus cursed the fig tree um, because it had the appearance of fruitfulness, but it was deceptive. It didn't produce fruit. What do you, what is that? When I said that to you, what it, what's kind of came to came to mind? It had the appearance of fruitfulness, but it was deceptive. Um, a sheep in wool and wolf's clothing, a wolf in sheep's clothing, where you got this charismatic person talking mm. to you, and I'm not necessarily mean religious charismatic, right, right. but you know, Mr. Good Boy come through and he's looking good <laughs> and he's smelling good and all of this. However. He stayed with his mama. And I mean, stay with his mama. He's not taking care of his mother. He has no income. He has no religious life. And that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. He has nothing going on, but he look good and he smell good till you get to him. You start talking to him and you like, excuse me. Mm -hmm. 
you you're the not so that those we have those those Christians who look good and look good on they paper. The part. They talk the talk, but when you really get down mm-hmm. to them, no, they're, yeah. they're they're not there. And I don't want to be that one person. I, I really don't because to me that's 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 just sin. Well, that that's what it <laughs> that's goes on to say. Sin. It goes on to say the falseness is the essence of hypocrisy. And the Bible's full of verses where Jesus addresses hypocrisy. He witnessed it so often. He used the tree in this story as a vivid depiction of it. Um, The day before he told this parable, he had entered the temple courts to find in his father's house, turned into a market filled with people who didn't care about God, but were taking advantage of those hearts who wanted to grow and honor him. Um, And so it was one of those I think of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were supposed to be the upper echelon, the creme de la creme. Yeah. But they were so hip, so hypocritical. I'm trying to find that word, hypocritical, and they were like blocks to to people growing and learning. They treated people poorly, but they were supposed to be again. Yeah, the, they the were well the educated. people that you want to, you know, you really want to hang out with because they were. Um, they, they, they're supposed to know what's going on. They're well, they're the, supposed know. to know the word. Here's right. the thing. That's why you have to be careful and ask for discerning, to have a discerning spirit because we do. We are so great with having a facade. We can look amazing. And there's <laughs> amazing, but then there's, there's no substance behind it. There's no depth. So as Christians, when, we, when we're always encouraged and admonished, read the word for yourself. Because if you go anywhere and it doesn't align with the word, then 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 it's not true. So is wrong. And but it could be someone who appears like a Pharisee or a Sadducee, and you have to be mindful because there's a lot out there. There's a lot out there. So we won't don't want to have the appearance of fruitfulness. We really want to be fruitful. I love that one. I was reading here where it says a fruitful Christian is a contradiction, an indication mm-hmm. that something abnormal is going on. Rather than command us to bear fruit, Jesus tells us we must abide in him. Mm-hmm. He's not making it hard for us. He's not telling us we got to go out there and do all of this stuff. If you just just talk to me and I can handle all of that for you, we make things hard on ourselves. Absolutely. Oh, so hard oh. on ourselves because we just got to do it. But he he's, he says he got your back is that's what the new thing is now. I got your <laughs> back. He's got your back. You got to trust him. It's not in your timing. No, but it's his timing. He knows when you need it. Absolutely. Always Absolutely. knows when you need it. And he knows when you do not need it. And he knows you. He, he knows you're not ready to get it. That, right. that That's another thing. We have these pretty little trees and somebody said, oh, well, what? those roots they're not ready mm-hmm. you're not mm-hmm. ready you know you're not ready for all of the windfalls all the wonderful things that he's going to do for you because he knows you're not grounded mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. heart is not where it needs to be so in year one it may make sense that the tree is the fig tree is barren because there's nurturing still going on they're still growing there's there's still the watering and all of that the pruning but in year three it's kind of, it makes me think, Barb, of when you're a babe, you drink milk. But when you're grown, you should be eating meat. And that was one of the one things when I first came to the church, Pastor Tony used to talk about, he's still giving us milk. We should be eating meat oh. and vegetables. And some of us are still okay. drinking milk. So isn't that a, an amazing parallel to why aren't you bearing fruit? Because if you're still drinking milk, that means the roots still are not deep enough. Right. Correct. You're still not reading your word on a regular. You're still not seeking him. You're seeking how you can move forward, how you can get a notch on, on your belt, how you can move up the ladder. And that's not necessarily where God is, is directing your path. And it's, and it may be years before people get it. And then they, and then they redirect kind of, okay, God, what are you, what will you have me to do? <laughs> Not that it hasn't when, worked. When, when it knocks that eureka in your forehead, yeah. you're like, I, I can't do this. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. I personally had to come to that realization. I can't do this alone. Absolutely. And I think as we, we begin to close, and hopefully 
there's been something said or done that has illuminated this parable to you and, and really for you to take a look at your own life. Um, when we talk about the state of Israel, we're also talking about the state of, of us individually and that we have to be grounded in him. He wants us to be grounded in him. He wants us to fully repent and ask for his forgiveness. Um, we don't know the day nor the hour. And so if you are hearing this message and you have not given your life to Jesus, then I would, then I would say, don't let another day go by. Mm-hmm. Like, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Nope. Um, and there's much going on in on the earth that we hear people passing away on a regular basis. And so we can't assume that my number could be next and your number could be next. Not to be doom and gloom, but back to our story is we really want to make sure that you take a look at yourself and and, and ask yourself, am I exhibiting those characteristics um, of someone who is those characteristics of love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Am I looking out for my brother? Am I more concerned about what would God have me to do? Because if you're not, you risk the chance of not reaching eternity with him. Right. And at the end of the day, that's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. To sit at his feet. And the reality is it's treating people with love and dignity. We, well, there's so many people out there mean and killing and whatever's going on um, and a sundry of things. But he is saying, seek me and, and bear these types of fruits because then they will know you by the fruit you bear. We're so, thank you so much, Barb, for joining us to this evening. Thank you for being here with me. It's my I first enjoyed, time. I enjoyed it. Yes, it was, but won't be the last. And so I enjoyed it. And I thank you all for joining us. Um, We're going to close out in prayer. And um, so if you'll bow your heads, thank you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity to come before you, Lord. We hope that we were able to bring forth a better understanding to those, those out there seeking to better understand you, to seek you, to grow deeper in your word, Lord. Um, We hope that something is said, Lord, that they may take it to heart and it may it may be in, in on solid ground or, or, or in, in good soil, Lord, that it may yes. grow. Lord, we ask that you encourage their heart to dig deeper in your word, Lord, so that they may be rooted deeply in you, which is what you ultimately want, that they may seek you for all their, yes. their being, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we ask you to go with us as we continue on the journey until you call us home. But Lord, bless us and keep us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned next week for our last parable. Um, I think it's going to be a a winner. So thank you. Take care and God bless you.